The deck builder and card battler genres have each produced some amazing hit games. From Slay the Spire, to Monster Train, to Dicey Dungeons, and most recently Griftlands, there are some critically acclaimed heavy hitters on pretty much every platform. But let's say you've gotten your fill of these games and want something else to try. Maybe you want something different visually, or you want something that looks to change things up gameplay-wise. Well, lucky for you, I've put together a list of 10 deck builder and card battler hidden gems that fans of the genre should wishlist and play right now. Sit back, relax, smash that subscribe button, and stick around to the end of the video for more information on our indie game giveaway which ends this Friday. Let's get right into the list. Starting off the list is For the Warp. For the Warp is a roguelite deck builder set in space. You'll need to build your deck and use your cards wisely in order to survive the game's randomly generated systems, enemies, and encounters. For the Warp definitely has some FTL in its DNA, but with a more direct focus on combat. The pixel art is gorgeous, and although it is an early access, the game continues to receive regular content updates with its most recent update dropping last month. You can check out For the Warp on Steam. Up next is a game with a beautiful art style and plenty of satire in Urban Cards. Urban Cards is a cutthroat capitalist deck builder where cash is king. With plenty of business deals, exploitation of workers, and stealing from the competition by nefarious means, the game really does have your cutthroat capitalism needs covered. Urban Cards has three different factions in order to cover multiple play styles as well as online PvP for one-on-one -on -one card battles. This roguelike deck builder released earlier this year, but for all you Switch players out there, a port to your hybrid handheld of choice is being worked on. At number 8, we have Quantum Protocol. Have you ever wanted to play a deck builder where it was always your turn? We'll say hello to Quantum Protocol. Quantum Protocol is an anime-infused deck builder where your cards are your hacking tools. You'll need to craft the ultimate deck to overcome the most dangerous malware in the world. I love the puzzle and visual novel elements here, and the game continues to receive regular updates and even some indie game collaborations. On a list of digital card-based games, I had to include something Solitaire-related, so at number 7 we have Solitarica. Solitarica combines what you know and love of Solitaire and blends it with RPG mechanics and roguelike progression. With four different energies along with various spells, magic, and enemies to take on with turn-based Solitaire combat, there's a lot of game here. I love seeing games that take inspiration from a classic and turn it on its head, and Solitarica is a great example of that. At number 6, we have a humorous and cartoony take on a card battler RPG and card apocalypse. In card apocalypse, you set out to make friends, bend rules, play cards, become a mega mutant power pets master, and save the world, which sounds like a lot for your main character, who happens to be an elementary school student in the 90s. What I really like here is the level of choice in upgrading your favorite cards with stickers, or in the case of champion cards, playing tactically to have those cards evolve. The game definitely hits nostalgic notes for me, and I feel like this would be a great one to recommend for all experience levels in the genre. Number Number 5 features a roguelike deck builder in Nowhere Profit. In Nowhere Profit, you'll need to build a band of refugees and outcasts and lead them across a strange and broken world. Each run is procedurally generated and there's permadeath, so you'll need to manage your deck and play your cards wisely. I really enjoy the setting here and the cards themselves have a crisp presentation and are easy to understand. The storytelling is a nice touch and for those of you who want a more difficult deck builder to tackle, this might be the one for you.
Next up is a game that takes deck building and card play to new places with Signs of the Sojourner. In Signs of the Sojourner, you use your cards to navigate conversations with friends and rivals on an adventure about leaving home to help your town and the growth and change that occurs upon your return. What I really enjoyed about my time with this game is how the card battles play out. They're not really battles at all, they're more of a cooperative dance that you feel out as time goes on. The way you gauge personality and feeling helps you determine what cards to play and what cards to keep in your deck. It's a cool take with a wonderful art style and a soundtrack that fits perfectly. At number 3 we have Dimension Rain. Dimension Rain is a roguelike deck builder where you control two characters at once which provides for a nice level of chaining opportunities. The game definitely takes some inspiration from Slay the Spire which is a good thing but it has a unique presentation and a greater focus on breaks which means when battling hordes of enemies you'll have the ability to wipe an entire screen before they have a chance to attack which is satisfying to pull off. I like the relic system here and I appreciate the continued tweaks to the balance based on player feedback. Number 2 features one of my favorite art styles on this list with Iris and the Giant. In Iris and the Giant, you play as Iris who must face her fears and inner demons in an imaginary world. What first caught my eye to Iris and the Giant was the beautiful illustration and lovely color palettes chosen. It fits so well with the melancholic and emotional atmosphere that is being conveyed here. With each encounter, you'll get access to new cards which makes Iris stronger. You can find out if you can calm the Raging Giant on PC or on Nintendo Switch. At number one, we have a swashbuckling take on the roguelike deck builder genre with Pirates Outlaws. In Pirates Outlaws, you set off to navigate through treacherous waters with plenty of ambushes and encounters to become a reputable pirate. The game features 15 different heroes, each with unique abilities and pre-made decks along with over 500 cards and 160 relics to collect. That's already a lot of game, but Pirates Outlaws also has three different game modes to keep things fresh. This is a game that has a fairly accessible entry point for beginners, but has enough variety and replayability for more seasoned fans of the genre to get into as well. Great use of teals and reds for a nice pop, and I like that it's available on PC or on mobile for those that want to chart these dangerous seas on the go.
And there we have it, 10 Deck Builder and Card Battler Hidden Gems. Which ones from this list were your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. What's your personal favorite Deck Builder or Card Battler? Let me know that as well. Make sure to wishlist any game you think you might enjoy from this list as it helps the developers and publishers. If you like this video, please leave a like, and if you can, please subscribe as it helps out the channel quite a bit. I'm looking to grow this channel and your support would mean the world to me. If you want a chance to win a free indie game on me, I'm doing an indie game giveaway right now on Twitter, which ends this Friday, so head on over there for more information. Links will be provided in the description and in a pinned comment below. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you again in the next one.